Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank God for this day. I thank God because of you. He has taken, protected you and he has taken care of you. And I believe that all that has not been accomplished. He is faithful to accomplish each and everything. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. Uh, Reverend Moses Gwampade. Moses that has been granted to me uh, to, to share the word of God with you. My name is Mohoya Andrew and I'm a member of this church. I've been in this church for close 15 years. I was just a new believer when I joined this church. But I thank God for the great work uh, that our pastors do in our lives. That we, they feed us that we can also feed, help to feed the, the flock of Jesus Christ. Uh, so let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for we are alive. We praise you for your wondrous works. We thank you for our pastors. Thank you for the Gospel Messengers Church. And we praise you for the whole body of Christ. We praise you for all your ministers. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Holy Spirit of God, come and illuminate our hearts that we may see your way. Uh, use me as a vessel to speak your word. And at the end of it all, may all the glory and honor and praise will be yours forever. Amen. Amen. Give a hand clap to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, today we are going uh, to look at how, what is our view of Jesus Christ. And what is our view about ourselves as believers. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't have a, a right perspective of Jesus Christ, then you won't have a right perspective of yourself as a believer. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I will just start with some questions. And how do you view Jesus Christ? Do you see him as uh, someone who was born in a manger? by poor parents one who grew up in a much despised poor community we know that Jesus grew up in Nazareth and he, it was a very despised town do you see him as one who whose parents took to Egypt running out from King Herodes uh, do you see him as one who didn't attend any education? A poor carpenter? One who walked on foot for long distances? Sometimes went hungry? At one time... Do you see him as one who was arrested by, uh, by the Roman soldiers? One who was slapped on the other side of the cheek and the other? One who was stripped naked? 
the one who hung on the cross well that is all right about Jesus in about 33 years Jesus experienced all this drama here but everything that we've mentioned and more has great significance as why he experienced them you cannot characterize such things, such events to happen to a king of kings and the lord of the universe. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says that uh, Jesus humbled himself to a position of a servant. And yet, the Bible says that in, in the beginning was the Word. Let's read in, in uh, John chapter 1. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. It says, I'm going to read the Amplified Version. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word. And that is Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. Uh, many of us sometimes forget that Jesus existed before anything existed. We have heard many people arguing that how can a, the Son of God be slapped to that extent? That even an LC one cannot be slapped to that extent. How can a Son of God be beaten and spat at and, and experiences all those, uh, the things he experienced. The, re, the, the, the problem is that we don't know why he experienced those things. Uh, everything that he did, it was on a mission. He, were, he had to leave all his glory in heaven and come on that mission. Praise be to God. Amen. There is a, a certain movie that I watched. It was a Nigerian movie. I'm not a, a big fan of movies, but this, this one... I, I found it playing, so it caught my attention. This was a king with his, uh, with his son who was, who was ready to get married. But then many girls were playing, we were uh, wanted, to, had intention to marry the, the, the prince. So they were, the choices were many, that were very many that, uh, that he couldn't uh, choose the right one. So the king and the prince decided to go somewhere away in a certain uh, village, a remote area. It was like a slum. And they rented a, a small room. It, it was a despised community where they rented. And they lived a very poor life. And they pretended that they, they needed help. Now the girls around... Uh, most of them were despising them. And even their parents warned the, their daughters not to, to, to associate with, 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 the, with the, the prince. They, they were worried that the, the, their daughters would marry a very poor boy. Good enough that this prince and the king were patient. They stayed there for some time. 
Among the many girls that were around, there was one girl who really considered and, and had respect for them. She disobeyed her parents' rules not to associate with the prince and she could even take them some food sometimes. To cut the, the long story short, the king and the, and, and the, his, uh, the, king and the, the son decided that that was the right girl for them. For the, for the son. And then they went back to the palace. They arranged. They set a convoy of vehicles to come and pick the girl and her parents. Uh, they told the, the they told the drivers to tell um to, 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 to tell the parents that so and so whom they knew as a poor man was had invited them to their home. And they when they reached the palace, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. They asked the man and his son why they had fooled them like that for all that long. And then they reply that we were on a mission. And we have accomplished that mission. When these other girls learned of it, everybody was so devastated. And they said, how couldn't we know? But because they were on a mission. So Jesus, when we see him as somebody who went hungry, somebody who was beaten, somebody without knowing why he experienced that, then we miss the whole point. All that he experienced doesn't take away his deity. It doesn't take away his sonship. It doesn't take away the fact that he was the king of kings and lord of lords. There was nothing that could happen to him that could take away his being God. Uh, we read uh, in Isaiah 53. Isaiah prophesied many years before Jesus even came. He gave a summer of, of Jesus' life. Uh, Isaiah 53 from verse 2. He said that for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Uh, are you there? Isaiah 53, verse 53, okay, yes. Two. And as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, if you read the whole chapter, you will see even uh, how Jesus' mission would be. 
It wasn't an easy one. But he chose to take it on. He took it out of love. And even though he, the people he was doing it for didn't know, he didn't give up. Up to now, many people don't know the reason why he came. Many of them call him a thief. That he was beaten because he stole something. But it's, the Bible says that it is our sorrows that he came to carry. That he was beaten that we should be healed. He became poor that we can become rich. But all that he experienced, he remained God. Praise God. Amen. Of course, for him to die, he had to, to, to put on flesh. And for him to put on flesh, he had to be born by a mother. And for him to grow, he had to have parents. Praise God. Amen. Only that he's the, he didn't come out of the seed of Joseph. Because everyone who comes out of the seed of man is, is born with sin. But our master, he was born sinless and he died sinless and he left this world sinless. He said in Matthew 21, 42, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in uh, this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in your in our eyes. Praise God. Amen. I want to let you know that. God can make the most despised things to bring his glory. Not only to bring his glory, but to fulfill his mission. There are many things that are despised that God can use to bring his glory and to fulfill his mission. Jesus' poor life that he lived accomplished like the greatest mission on, 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 that will ever exist on earth. And that is the salvation of your souls and my soul. Praise God. Amen. Some of us, are, when, we ask, when we look at our background and our families, we try to feel ashamed about them. And you don't know that it is not by mistake that you were born by that mother or by that father or in that village. And sometimes we forget that God has a great plan for us as in Jeremiah 29, 11. We ask ourselves, why was I born here? Why is this happening to me? Why do I have such and such? Our master Jesus was born in the most despised town. By poor parents. He lived a very poor life. He even said that he, he didn't have where to stay. In Luke, uh, Luke 9, 57. He said that foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And yet the, the, the Son of Man is the owner of silver and gold. Praise God. Amen. How do I view myself? By, do I view myself by 
the parents of by my parents or those who gave birth to me we even fear to reveal our identity of who our parents are. Because we fear of what people will think about us. We sometimes improvise our parents. This is very common in schools. Many children, when they... they, they they don't want to talk about their parents. Because maybe their parents are very poor. Some of them are uneducated. Some of them don't look nice. So when a parent shows up, uh, maybe they tell, let me meet you somewhere. Because they don't want the, the friends to see that that's their father or mother. In doing so, it's like we are saying that God made a mistake to, to give me so and so as, as my father and mother. Praise be to God. Amen. But I believe the reality may come one day. Some people say that uh, the improvise is a nice looking father. They get one with a car so that they can have some swag around their friends. Sometimes even when the father dies, they even don't mention about it. But that's like you're telling God that he made a mistake. We even hide our places of origin where we are born. We are ashamed of where we are born. Uh, uh, some, some, uh, some many, many, many youth especially, they will not talk of where they are born. I say that we are born in Kampala. No. That's not the, that's not the, the, the reason. Why. That, that's not how uh, God cannot get glory out of that. God wants you to speak where you are born. That I was born in Ibuhoya in Kalido. And I can't hide out of that and I'm proud of it. Sometimes we even hide our languages. Because we feel that some languages are more superior than the other. That's not true. It is God who created all the languages. It is God who created all the tribes. So if you were Muganda, say I'm a Muganda. If you were Musoka, say I'm a Musoka. If you are Munyarwanda, please let people know. Why do you feel ashamed? It is God who decided that you are born in Mnyarwanda. And he has a plan for that. Praise be to God. Amen. Some of us even uh, fear to host, uh, to tell people where we, we live, all uh, our homes. Especially here in the city. Maybe the place where you stay is is not nice looking. So especially we the men when we, we are dating the girls. I can request the other person to, 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 to lend me with their room. A place that looks better. So that I can show my girlfriend that that's where I, I live. We even fear to invite people to visit us. But that's not, uh, Jesus was not ashamed. He was not ashamed of his identity. He knew that his identity was not defined by where he was born. Your identity is not defined by where the, the village where you were born. Some of us hide. Uh, we don't want to tell others about our siblings. Maybe they, they, they are not attractive. 
So we improvise and say, those are my, that's my brother. Please meet my uncle. Please meet my, my sister. But when your real sisters, you're hiding them away. It's like saying, God, you made a mistake. You gave me a wrong sister. But do you know what God, God's plan for that sister of yours? Do you know why you were produced with that sister of yours or brother? He might be a drunkard. Might be a thief. Please, don't deny him. God can change him. Jesus does not feel ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. Let's look in Hebrews 2 from verse 11 to 12. I don't know if uh, we are together. Uh, verse 11, say, Hebrews 2, 11. Say, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call us, to call them brethren. Saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. What are you ashamed of? What are you ashamed about? Do you know that God can use that and is ready to use that for his glory? Some of us are even ashamed of introducing us, uh, uh, our spouses to, 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 to friends. We're even ashamed of working with our wives or our husbands. And God has, uh, did not make a mistake that that's your, your wife or your husband. Some of the women uh, here in Uganda, we do traditional marriages. They don't want to, they have those functions to be held where they are born. They go and look for a nice looking home somewhere. And that's where they take the guests. So that they may have a good impression. You, you are not defined by where you're born. Your identity is that you are a child of God. No matter what, what people know about you. The most important thing is that you are a child of God. And that the God has a purpose for you. And he has a reason as to why you are in such and such a, a place. Praise God. Amen. Uh, some, they even, uh, they even, you see those traditional functions involve aunties. They even hire aunties. Yet they have their aunties. But they feel that they are not, they are not fit to, 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 to be seen by people. That is your auntie. Why do you fake? Some of us are afraid of giving our testimony. We fear to, to testify of where God has brought us from. That kind of fear is a very bad spirit. That we should fight. That we should fight. The devil should not hinder us from proclaiming where God brought us from. If, if, if I was born in a very poor family, then I should not get ashamed. If I am not educated but God has helped me, I can speak it. Because it gives glory to God. How have you declared God, all God's works for you in your life? 
Because Psalms 73 verse 28 says Psalm 73 28 Praise God Amen But it is good for me to draw near to God I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. To declare all his works. Praise God. Amen. Let us not feel ashamed. The Bible says that he raises my feet from the clay. And he establishes me on a rock. Praise God. Amen. We see this man uh, Gideon in tu, Judges 6. We may not read there from verse 11 to 16. But the angel of the Lord finds him. And he said, he calls him a mighty man of valor. But Gideon was shocked. And he said, I'm from the poorest family. I'm from the most despised clan. And how can you address me like that? But the angel of the Lord, he knew that he was not defined by his family background. But God's plan and how God views him. Do you know God's plan for your life? Do you know God's plan for your family members whom you despise? Do you know the, the God's plan for that person whom you despise? Praise God. Amen. Do not hide the facts about you. Because you will be killing testimony. God wants people to know where he has found you. The situation he has found you in. So that he will get glory at the end after he has rescued you from that situation. In John chapter, six, chapter 9 verse 6 to 9. We see that Jesus heals this blind man. We may read some few verses in that text. Verse, from verse 6. Yokana. It says, when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva. And he spread them the mud like an ointment on the man's eyes. And he said to them, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Which means, which is, is translated, sent. So he went away and washed and came back seeing. So the neighbors, this is, this is the most interesting verse. So the neighbors and those who used to know him as a beggar said, is not this the man who used to sit and beg? So why do, we, do you hide your identity or why do you hide that, uh, the, the place where you stay? Because the, the people should know where God, how God found you. Jesus wants to find you in where you are. You don't have to hide around. He wants to fix where you are from where you are. One time when I, uh, many years back, I had a dream. I was renting a small room we were there with my brother and we, it, it, it didn't even have a window all we had was a table and a stool and a bed a small bed so I, in this dream I saw that uh, Reverend Moses wanted to visit me 
But I was hesitant because I was giving a, I was I was like what Reverend Moses wants um, needs to eat meat but I don't I can't afford the meat So I was so afraid and I, in, my, in the dream I said why can't he visit so and so because for them they could uh, they could uh, uh, provide for him but then Reverend Moses still came and in the dream I saw that I was panicking I gave him the small stool that, that we had in the house and then he told me that I haven't come to, uh, I, I haven't come to eat meat he told me that I just came to check on you and I felt that in the dream I felt a lot of joy in my heart. And he was ready to say farewell, to, to, to say goodbye. I told him, you don't leave without praying for me. Then he, I, I knelt down and put my hands up and he prayed for me. In the dream I saw that I had I collapsed down. And then I had a voice of very, very significant words that I, I have kept all my life. But in the dream I was afraid of hosting him. The Bible says that don't even I don't refuse to entertain guests. For, by so, for in so doing, many have entertained angels unknowingly. I urge you not to, to, to look to define yourself or to look at, to view yourself by what is surrounding you. 1 Samuel 2.8 says that he raises the poor from dust and Musa lifts the beggar from the ash heap. Praise be to God. Amen. God has a great plan for your life. Don't feel ashamed about what you're going through. The Bible says that those who put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. That shame that you feel right now will turn into glory. Is going to turn into dancing. Because we've, we have a, a lot of witnesses whom whose lives have been changed by the Lord. Don't deny your, your wife, don't deny your husband, don't deny your children. Don't, don't deny your father. Don't deny the village where you were born. Please, just trust in the Lord. He has a great plan for you. May God bless you.